everybody, looks like we are live. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me on this uh, Wednesday evening, the first Wednesday of February 2023. So thank you so much for hanging out and uh, helping me to keep this channel going and, uh, you know, with the, the best the best members ever. So let's see who we are, who we have today. Fred, all the way from the UK. How are you, sir? Always a pleasure. We have Roy, Color Graphics from New Jersey. How's everything? Colette, thank you so much for coming by all the way from Wisconsin. Mr. Steve Leahy, how are you, sir? Great to see you all the way from Ohio. And then we have Brad all the way from Man Manitoba, Canada. So friend from up north, John Diekman from Wisconsin. We have Tone from Queens, but coming to you from Jacksonville, Florida. Rick from Montreal. So, and John, so we have John Diekman, Rick. So this is a great, great group. Thank you so much for hanging out. Dwayne, how are you? All the way from, from California. So great to see you, Dwayne. Thank you for hanging out. So this is fantastic. I'm going to move my tablet. That's what I do my, my uh, computer graphics on there. So that is cool. Computer graphics is very, very important and big part of airbrushing. Uh, so definitely if you... Oh, I'm going to drop everything. I think I'm okay here. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Get my metal board here. That's this what I learned from Mr. Steve Leahy. He taught me all about that on his live streams, which is really great if you haven't checked out his live streams. But I learned about the boards and the magnets and everything like that. Let's see, where is my line drawing? So this is great, we're doing part one today, which is always very informative and very popular out there. So let's see here. We've got our line drawing here. Let's see if I could get this a little better situated. Let's see. Now, move this over like that. Okay. Honey, how are you? Great to see you. Always a pleasure. So that's so cool. All the way from uh, Rockville Center, New York. Let's see here. So, I'm going to... Get my little border here. This will keep everything clean, which is good. And let's see. Oh, wow. 30, 30 glasses here. So, I know I have a napkin, or I'm just going to use my shirt so that's probably good just to clean these glasses here so let's see so great group we have here today which is always a pleasure to see everybody patty how are you all the way from illinois how's it going great to see you always a pleasure patty all right, so I'm just going to, it's like doing a puzzle. Let's see. I think this is the right size. Yes. Okay. This border keeps everything clean, which is nice. One on each side. Okay, so 
Now we always start out, let me turn off this overhead light here. Otherwise we'll get like weird shadows and stuff. Let's see. So I start out with a line drawing as you see, but what I want to do is kind of kill these inside shadow, inside border areas because they're going to be in the way. What I like doing in the beginning is coming in with the white mixture, which is Drew Blair's 5050 Illustration White by Createx, which is a great illustration paint company so um, they are they really help out a lot of the airbrush artists out there do some uh, great artwork so how can you how can you fault them you really can't they're doing some great stuff so uh, I really love their illustration line uh, really really fantastic the erasability all that is really really the top in the industry so I give them that that's for sure as you can see I'm getting rid of the really inside uh, borders you know such as value as as the zygomatic bone turns away from the light you see a shadow those are like contours on the inside and that has to be basically uh, very very subtle so you don't want a line for that a line for that will actually get in the way and be something that you would have to erase and it it's not going to be easy so let's let's strive for easy or the path of least resistance so really really happy with part one here so he's uh, very informative and a lot of fun let's see if I can bring the picture of her in so this way you can say that's what Tim's doing let's see so I'm gonna go to image and I'm gonna look for this image let's see I believe it's in my downloads folder folder where is she There she is. Okay, so look how pretty she is. So it's nice, beautiful, expressive portrait here. So you can see what we're going to be doing. Honey says, when you do your love drawing, what type of oh, my line drawing what type of of lead do i use i use one of these here which is the pentel i've been using this for the last 20 years the pentel 0 0.5 its designation is p as in uh papa 205 and uh i like using the f leads in there they're really good and so that's cool fred says What's the info on your classes now? Prices, etc. Oh, great. So I have right now, which is a uh, mentorship program where I have a few openings. And it's uh, 145 a month. And with that, uh, it's normally 145 per month. But if you sign up today, I'll, have, I'll give you the $99. Uh, and I'll lock that price in for you for the next six months. But normally, except for if you do it today, the mentorship program is uh, it's only uh, $99.95 right now. So it's a really good deal. And let's see if I can go ahead and do a link for you. I'd be more than happy to do that for you. Let's see. That's where you find all the secrets. How do I make my stencils? How do I, uh, how do I do uh, the digital part of it? Uh, how do I get the line drawing onto the surface? Uh, you can learn everything from me, from airbrush to pastel to oil paints, to learning how to 
design your own website. So being part of my mentorship program is really something that is normally $149.95, but today, since you asked me, Fred, I'm going to open it up for everybody for only $99.95, and that's uh, per month for six months. Let's go ahead and copy this. And thanks for asking, Fred. I really appreciate that. See, when people do stuff like that, everyone wins. So let's see. Yes, it's once a week, plus you get a, it's once per week, Fred, plus you get invited to the group class. So it's four hours of instruction per week. In the group class, class we go over stuff like anatomy, uh, go over stuff like, uh, you know, how to use the, uh, you know, the, the tablet and how to use Krita, how to, how to change backgrounds and everything like that. So one, two hour, one-on-one -on -one class working around your schedule and uh, you're invited to the group class. So that, if you think about it, that's eight, eight times four, wow. So that's, no, so that's, yeah, so that's four, four times four, 16 hours of classes at least per month. So very, very cool. So there's the link if anyone's interested. Okay. So right now what I like to do is to go ahead and uh, work on the white mixture and let me go get my my airbrush here where is it that's the question as you can see when I do the light mixture I like a little bit uh, bigger needle nozzle combination here so I use the Omni 4000 for this and oh Brad says Tim's classes are top-notch a real bargain thank you sir I appreciate that do you know that uh, mr. Brad has been with me for three years every week we've been working together for three years and Brad's work is just incredible and he keeps getting better and better it just goes to show you that any class is really good but like all my students they give a hundred percent and they get so much out of it so it's not just me and my classes but the hard work of my students and I'm proud of every one of my students uh, I look forward to classes it's like hanging out with friends you know it really is every week you know I have my students and I just can't wait to see them I don't know if it's the other way around, but I know from this end. And I'm just so proud of their growth and how well they do. And I pour myself into my students and my students, they give 100%. And that's just so exciting to see, you know? Uh, I, oh, thanks, Brad, uh, Color Graphics. Uh, Mr. Roy says one of my students worth the money. Oh, that's so cool. And uh, in Colette says, do it, Fred. <laughs> the group class is always great, you know. Uh, thanks, Colette. I appreciate it. You guys are amazing. And I only have a few openings left because I do have currently eight students. And there's only so many weeks in, in the, in hours in the week. So uh, definitely I don't have more than a couple of openings. I would love to have openings for a lot, but I have to also do my own stuff. And so definitely. Okay, so I have the white mixture in. So I have a, um, a pack valve or Mac valve and I'm just making sure that I don't want it blasting, you know? I want a very light mist over here, you know? 
Ah, uh, thanks. Roy says we have a lot of fun. We really do. Thank you, sir. I definitely have a lot of fun with you guys. And so, here goes. I'm going to be... Let me see. I'm going to be approximately... Uh, maybe about four inches from the subject, from the paper. I'm going to put some magnets because I don't want underspray. Underspray. Not as, not as heard of, but just as, just as terrible to your artwork. You're getting underneath your stencils. Uh, group classes are never dull. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> we do have a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely. You definitely want to find the teacher, not only the technique, but also someone who speaks your language. And it may not be me, it could be someone else, but always say, you know, I remember my days uh, when I was at the National Academy School of Fine Arts, and I would look for the teacher who spoke to me, whose work spoke to me, and and that's important, you know, whoever that is. If it's Drew, that's cool, Marissa. Uh, you wanna find that teacher who, who really speaks your language, who, you know, you have similar artistic goals, that sort of thing. So definitely, it's not something to take lightly, finding the right teacher. Uh, Oh, great. So that's inexpensive. That's fantastic. And let's see here. So now, and let's see. So we had a couple of, uh, we had a couple of classes together, honey, which was nice. And I enjoyed that. And let's see. I'll just make sure. I don't want pencil lines getting in the way, right? That's so take your time before you spray. Make sure that you plow the field and get rid of anything that may be in the way. Take your time to spray, get rid of anything that's in the way. See that's kind of poetic. And yes, so honey is a very productive busy person and all right here goes nothing from about four inches away and I found that even my initial spray was coming out a little strong I want to make sure that nothing's coming out before I spray I'm going to be super light as light as you want to go, you want to go even lighter. So I'm going to start with her forehead. Right here, um, between her eyes, you have the uh, nasal eminence, and then there's an indentation right here, right above the pupils. And then right below that is when we start to get the nasalis bone. And then we come down. Right through the la upper lateral cartilage, and then to the alar cartilage on the nose. The nose is is divided into three parts, and each part has a left and right. So there's a left and right nasal bone, there's a left and right upper lateral cartilage, and a left and right alar cartilage. There we go. So we have the nose. So that's good. Oh, that's fantastic. So we definitely reserve a spot for you, honey. That's for sure. Thank you for that. Again, so now I'm going to work on the zygomatic bone. And we're just going to come down. 
You're never excused from the one second rule. So always remember, one second rule is key. Whether you're doing airbrush, pastel, oil painting, pencil, it doesn't matter. If you're not doing the one second rule, then you're skirting the subject. There's no way out. So I can see, I started with the zygomatic bone coming down here into the, into the malar fat compartment, right? Same thing over here. Zygomatic bone. What we're doing is just creating some dimension. Where we're putting the white mixture is actually pushing that forward. So this way we're kind of creating a sculptural surface from the very beginning. But like I say, finding the right teacher is really important. The right teacher for you. Again, I'm plowing the field here, but I'm not erasing where it's wet. Never erase on wet paper. It's not good. Okay, so we're going to do right uh, here, which is uh, underneath the nose. There's a little indication of the nasolabial fold over here, very light. You're going to hear me talking about the anatomical forms of the face. You have to know your face if you're going to do the portrait. You know, um, you have to. And that's what you learn in my classes. If you're going to do the portrait, you're going to know what makes up that portrait. So I'm going to do this indication here of the philtrum. Sometimes it's called the uh, pupit bow. Hey, Tone. Tone says, do you use the monitor for the reference? Definitely, always the monitor. I was one of the first artists back in 2000 and maybe like 2000 who started using the monitor as uh, for reference because I was like a computer person so and an artist at the same time. So then it it wasn't until around 2005 that other artists started catching on, but I was one of the first. Like anything else, the artists, a lot of the traditional artists, they fight technology. And I have always been one of the artists that use technology and embrace technology. Do I use more than one copy of the reference? No, just one copy. Uh, that's it. And so I have this program. If you haven't gotten it, it's Pure Ref. P-U-R-E-R-E-F. And Pure Ref is amazing. It's free. Just go to pureref.org and you can download that. And it's free. It's a fantastic program. You put your photos in it and it always is on top. Whatever you click on other programs, Pure Ref will always be on top. So unlike using like a Windows Media Viewer or something like that, where every time you press a button of another program, it goes back behind, this stays up on top. You can put other photos. What I do like in Pure Ref, I'll put like anatomical diagrams and stuff and add that. 
And so this way I could look at, let's say, the anatomy of the eye or the anatomy of the nose while I'm painting, and it's still in the same pure ref program, so I can go from that photo to the reference, regular reference photo that I'm using. Uh, Fred said, yes, I made a small mistake on that Danny portrait and erased on wet ink, but the ink is really easy to repair. Yes, definitely. So yeah, you, we do learn uh, that you know you don't want to erase the uh, the ink if it's uh, wet on the paper, you know, because it'll damage that paper. And what I'm going to do is just sort of intensify where the light is much more direct, where uh, where where her features are much more. Uh, parallel to the light source is going to get more light. So I'm just going to do that right now. Right here. A little more powerful light. Wow, a little bit of light. A little shaft of light right here. Beautiful little shaft of light right here. And if I want it softer, I just increase my distance of the airbrush to the paper. I'm just going to do a little bit of the white of the eye. I think that's called a scalera. But after tonight, uh, it's going to be one forty-nine per month. So if you, it's not pressure sales. It's just uh, someone mentioned it, and I always get thankful for that. And so I'll always make it a special, a special event. Even though I'm using the light mixture, I try and get as much control as possible. Okay. Right here on the chin, the mentalis. Right here in the mental fat, like a little golf ball. Let's see, how do we feel about this? Okay, we have some hands here, so let's see if we could work on some of her hands with the white mixture, just to bring that a little forward. fingers. Let's make this happen. Oh, no problem. My monitor is pretty small. I think it's like a 24 inch monitor. Um, nothing more than that. 20 inch monitor. Uh, I don't have to, you have, don't have to go big with the monitor because you can always just enlarge it with pure ref. So a uh, normal size monitor. Um, I don't like in my work areas, I don't like anything ostentatious. I want everything to be functional, but not like, oh my God, look at that monitor or anything. Everything has to be pretty much understated for me. That's the way I am. Kind of an understated guy. Let's see. So, this hand, this part of the hand here. Just going to use this. Perpendicular and not parallel. You know, about six inches from the subject, from the paper. And we're going to work on this hand here. 
just to bring this hand forward. And then we have this finger. There we go. And then the index finger, or actually, yeah, that's the index finger. Or middle finger, I should say. There's a little bit of light here, and just a little bit of light there. And... Hey, Mr. Paul all the way from Indiana, and Mr. Air Todd all the way from San Diego. Great to see you guys. And Fred says the ink, he can't stress enough how amazing it is to work with. It's really nice to knock back with erasers and get very soft look. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Yes, so Mr. Fred did an amazing portrait using the inks and the Extreme Patriot Arrow. And I'm very honored that he did. He did this great portrait of Danny Trejo. Came out amazing, you know? Uh, so really was a lot of fun to see the progress. Let's see here. Just working on this hand over here on the left. Now she has blonde hair, so there is some really light areas, so I'm going to go ahead and indicate that. Hey Brayden, all the way from Edmonton, thank you so much for the Super Chat sticker, my friend. That means the world to me, thank you, that really... That really gives me a boost, like a tonic, you know, just to uh, let me know I'm doing the right thing here, that people are appreciating it, great people like yourself. Braden is from Canada, Edmonton, just moved there. I believe he has a brand new house, which is very good. Congratulations. And what's the weather right now over there in, in uh, Edmonton, uh, Braden? So thank you, my friend. I really appreciate that once again. Thank you so much for that super chat sticker. I really think that's great. Very kind of you, sir. And you can see how, how we are, even though it's still early, we're really getting pretty far. Right, so we're paying attention to the large light areas, which is going to help us to block in and get really far really quick. And then I'm just going to plow the field here. We don't want to spray and lock in too many of these pencil lines. So we want to be very, we want to be very bold yet still uh, don't go too far. Mr. Ken, how are you? Great to see you. Always a pleasure. How's everything? So, Ken, good to see you. Uh, he's a little late because he's been working on the course he purchased from me. Oh, thank you. The course is going very well. Ken, I really appreciate that. Now, Ken, if I'm not mistaken, you're from Illinois. Let me know if I got that right or Indiana. So I believe it may be Indiana. I know it's Midwest. And always remember, Ken, if you have any questions with the course, you email me and I will take care of you and uh, help you with that course. So thank you for trusting me with that. And we have uh, Mr. Bill, Bill Snagan, all the way from New Jersey. Great to see you. How are you? Indianapolis, Indiana. Fantastic. Yes. Always a pleasure, Mr. Ken. Thank you so much. 
Always a pleasure to see you, Bill. And Brayden says it is minus four Fahrenheit. That's cold. I think we're going down to around that on Friday night. So I'm going to experience what you're experiencing very soon, <laughs> Brayden. I know I'm not going to go outside. Uh, so that's cool. So Bill is doing good. How is Sue, Bill? I hope she's doing very well. Okay, so we're getting everything situated, which is very good. Oh, that's very nice. Uh, people wishing uh, Sue well. That's fantastic. And just working on basically getting her hair and all the lights to bring things up forward. Tone says he's loving Florida 81 degrees. <laughs> yes, that's amazing. That's so great. Dwayne says, Tim, not sure if you're more, he's more impressed with my excellent artwork or the fact you remember where everyone is from. <laughs> yes, well, you know, Dwayne, it takes me a while to have it to sink in, you know? So I may get it wrong a few times. I think I got yours, your location wrong at least twice, but it, it sinks in and I get it because every one of you men and women out there are really important so I want to stress that you're coming to see me and know who I am and I'm really happy to see you guys and know where you guys are so that's cool and let's see and we have the hair here Just work on her fingers a little bit more. Perfect. Okay, so now we're going to work on the eyes, nose, and mouth stencil. I don't call them stencil, I call them, what do I call them? Customized shields. I like that. All right, so this is something I do on a computer. If you take my mentorship class, you would learn. I would definitely teach this stuff, which is really cool. So it's definitely a revolutionary way of doing it. Because I'm a rebel. Let's see. Nope, that's not the right side. Let's go this way. Okay, so I'm liking that. Let's move it just to the left. That looks good to me. We get some magnets to really keep that in place. You ever have like, you look and you you could have sworn you had a lot more magnets and like where are they? Do you ever do that? And like, I had more magnets than this. We'll see. Oh, Fred says, Sue and Bill are like the main mom and dad of the airbrush world, such great people. That's very cool. Yeah. Bill is amazing, and, uh, you know, he talks so well about uh, Mrs. Bill, which is nice, so that's really fantastic. And let's see what other people are saying. Blah, 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 blah. That's about it. Okay, people saying hi to one another, which is good. All right, so it's a little more than the eyes, nose, and mouth. So we're going to get your and my favorite airbrush ever. 
the Extreme Patriot Arrow, customized by myself to take a good airbrush and make it an amazing airbrush for $149.95. One quick note, I have one left to sell. And then after that, there'll be like a three week waiting list. So I have one of these for 149. If you're interested, um, there's a link in the, there's a link in the description field if you're interested. So keep that in mind. So I have one that could ship out within a couple of days, and then the rest I would have to order. So if you want to jump on that one, I would do that before anyone else. So one of the good reasons of jo joining these live streams is that you do get some uh, inside information at times. So right now I'm going to put this here. Now remember when you start out you use a detail mixture, right? The detail mixtures, those are my own patented Airbrush India inks and they are patented and so uh, I basically uh, invented these and perfected them over a period of about 10 years and now I have them really tweaked. So I'm going to put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 drops of the detail mixture and then 10 drops of water. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to get back of a brush, not the front of the brush, the back of the brush. I'm going to mix that up. And then I'm going to put the top on. Always put the tops on your brushes, my friend. There's no reason not to put the tops on. Give me a good reason not to put the top on. And uh, you'll get candy at the register on the way out. But there's no way under the sun is there ever a good enough reason not to put the cap on now you'll find out one day when you do making a nice turn that you didn't put the cap on and you ruined your artwork so that day will come trust me I know and that's why I don't use uh, side feeds anymore because you know what whatever you gain in that side feed that first time you 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 go like this and it comes off or whatever so you live and learn. Uh, let's see. Bill says, thank you so much, Fred. Fred says, yeah, I find the kids playing with the magnets on the radiators. <laughs> now, that's pretty funny. Okay, so we're starting with the detail mixture, eyes, nose, mouth, stencil. We're not just spraying through it. We're not just like, yay, spray through it because... Even though there are openings here, doesn't mean that you put the same amount of inks. You're going to be just as selective as before. Let me get another water because I'm dying of thirst. Be right back. I said I was going to get a water and I came back with a ginger ale, so let's see. Dwayne says he doesn't even know <laughs> where the caps with airbrushes are. Hasn't used one in 40 years. Wow, that's pretty cool. And so that's funny, Dwayne. And let's see, who else we got? What is he saying? Uh, very cool. I like ginger ale, but there's bubbles. The bubbles make you burp. All right, so 
Now I'm looking at her beautiful irises, right? So they're not that dark. So I'm gonna be about four inches away. I'm gonna make sure that I put uh, magnets close to the edge. I'm gonna start with the iris on camera left. There we go. And let's do the iris on camera right here. And I think I need some of those magnets that are that are on the radiators by by Fred's house because I'm all out. <laughs> Let's see. There we go. Just I'm still paying attention, even though it's the early going, and I'm spraying through these customized shields. I'm not. I'm being very deliberate and on purpose. Whatever I do on the left side, I do on the right side. And then we'll do our eyebrows. Okay, so we can come back. You never want to oversaturate at any point. From the very beginning to the very end, you want to be careful not to oversaturate. Now right here, I did uh, darken, I did lighten here with the white mixture, but I'm going to have to plow the field a little bit here because I did accidentally put some white mixture here and I want to darken this area because I made the uh, customized shield there and let's go ahead and put that in here just darken it and then we can always move a magnet over here because we don't want to underspray underspray is a real issue <laughs> Tone says decoration. Okay, great. So, see how I went there? And now there's a dark here by her hand. So, I'm going to spray there. Put a magnet right there. Spray that dark. Basically, what it's doing, it's, it's not like I'm doing anything important or anything. I'm just creating these little pockets of light and dark patterns so it gives me anchors to work with anchor points and it's supported by by the line drawing so it's all coming together and there's a nice dark over here that I have open with the shield and we'll just move this over here and this is like super light Always start super light. You can always go darker, you know? But if you go too dark, it's not a lot of fun trying to make it lighter. You're going to see when I lift this up, I'm going to have beautiful light and dark patterns. We can just move these magnets like redirecting our forces where we need them at the moment redirect our forces over here it's like a video game but different okay just redirect your forces Just like so. You see when we lift this, there's going to be wonderful light and dark patterns here. Uh, let's see, Fred says he doesn't know almost, uh, he doesn't know about over there, but years back uh, uh, over there in England, they used to sell a sod drink ginger beer. 
Wow, you used to put it. <laughs> wow. A, 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 a ginger. Oh, ginger beer. They have that here. That just started over here, Fred. Uh, I would say maybe in the past five years was the first time I saw a ginger beer. So people love that, especially during the autumn time. Uh, and the ginger beer isn't even uh, an alcoholic beverage. It's non-alcoholic. So that's interesting. Zero percent alcohol. So I'm going to darken the dark uh, inside her mouth. Right uh, on the top part where her tongue is. And I'm about... I would say about three inches from the paper. And then we have a very soft shadow underneath her bottom lip. And then let's not forget the shadow underneath her nostril, underneath her nose, the cast shadow. And it's darker from the top and gets lighter as it goes further from the bottom of the nose. You always want to be an inspector, a light inspector, and look at your photo and try and figure out what happened the day, the minute that that photo, the second that photo was taken. You know, you want, and being that light detective going to help you to recreate the scene of the crime, which is that photo. So now what I like to do is I went over everything and I want to do a sort of like uh, how do I call it just sort of peel back so we can see exactly so we just remove the magnets and we're going to do a little peel back and see what our little spray pattern looks like things we have to go darker Maybe make sure we don't go any darker, that sort of thing. And do a little peel back. Like a throwback Thursday. But this is a peel back. And let's see. Alright, so let's peel back even further. So you can see here. I'll just move these over here so we can peel back a little further. Maybe right here. So you can definitely see how she's coming out. And we definitely, you can see here that there's a, a, a light here. And so here's her sweater. Here's the dark underneath the sweater. Here's her chin. And you can see how we're developing her mouth, the cast shadow of her nose. And you can see where we can go a little bit darker by her mouth there, but we don't want to go continue over here where her tongue is. So what I'll do is I can see that there's a little bit darker right here. So we're going to leave that alone or maybe even spray that part even darker. So let's look at our reference. Yeah, so right there. And then right here, it's a little darker as well. So we could maybe intensify that a little bit. Maybe just like that. And let's see here. This, we can intensify it right here by the nostril openings. And maybe not too much, because we just want a general idea you know, a pattern. You know, we want to have a nice light and dark pattern here. Okay, so we're going to start with making her eyebrows a little bit darker. Let's do that. And let's see what I'm missing. Uh, oh, Fred says it burns the throat. Ginger, yes. Remember that hot summer days? The hydrate <laughs> closest thing. Oh my God, ginger beer. I love ginger, fresh ginger when you make a juice. Oh, that's 
good. I don't know why I'm so thirsty. Okay, so let's bring this down. And let's work on her eyes. Her eyes are pretty light, so I don't want to overdo it. But over here, her eyelashes, the mass of her eyelashes are pretty dark. So I'll intensify that. I'll intensify the dark of her eyebrows. Remember, this is a very light mixture I have here. So I'm not being a cowboy, you know? I'm just, there's a long way to get finished. So I'm taking my sweet time. You have to. And then I'm going to scroll down to her nose. And it's darker by the nostrils and kind of lightens up. So. so I'm not just spraying through this like just go in like yay, no, I'm I'm really being quite careful. Much darker on this edge here. Just a good head start. That's what it is. And then this is a nice rich dark. Always check with the reference. Your reference is always your best, your best answer. Ginger ale is making me burp. Excuse me. We'll read deploy our forces to the edge here. There we go. Right here, we deploy our forces. One can this up. Right here. And this is chestnut checkers, so we're playing several moves ahead, you know what I mean? So we're being very pragmatic, very strategic. Everything's geared to that last, that last bit of India ink at the very end. That's our, that's our, our target from the very beginning. Just like when you play chess, your target is to kill a queen. No, the, the queen is, the queen, yeah, but your real target is to capture the king. But the queen's usually in the way, so you got to kill the queen in chess. So that should be your target, not to kill the queen, but to capture the king. Because you capture the king, doesn't matter if there's seven queens. Okay. All right, so now let's go on to the next detailed the next uh, customize what do I call it customize shield so I'm just going to move these out of the way Let's see how this is going okay move this out of the way so not bad, so that's where we are. Kind of looks like she has a double twin, uh, double chin, but she doesn't, okay? Not that there's anything wrong with that. But right now I'm going to put this on, which is very interesting. This is interesting here. I'm gonna put this here. And this is a second specialized, detailed, customized shield here. I'm going to put this to kind of protect the outer areas. And then I have this one. This is for the nostrils, the upper lip, and the pupils. I never did one like this before. So there's a first time for everything. Make sure I have it the right way. Is it the right way? 
We'll find out. Okay. That is, let's see, not this way, it must be the other way. may have to get rid of this other little shield here, but I think I got it. Okay. Now, let's make this happen. So we'll put this here. We'll deploy our, deploy our magnetic forces. This one right here, I'm just going to remove because we don't need it. More trouble than it's worth, I think. Right here, just prepare for the underspray. Let's see what I'm missing here. Uh, is that stencil? Uh, is that stencil shield you made? Yes. So this is something that I made myself. If you take my free, if you take my uh, mentorship, I am completely uh, talk about everything I use from the computer programs to uh, the stencil material, uh, how to make the customized stencil so you can make them your own. So that's one of the things I, I share with my students. Okay, so now we're working on her pupil on both eyes. And that's going to be darker. I'm going to come back to that because it's nice and super dark. Now her lips aren't super dark, they're actually light. So I'm just going to very lightly come over. Hey Dave, how you doing? Mr. Dave Gregory, always a pleasure. How's everything, sir? So glad to see you. Now Dave, you're one of the people for some reason I have a hard time getting, but give me a moment and I'm seeing if I could recall where you're from. So thank you so much for coming as always. So I'm going to think. I'm thinking uh, like uh, you're out west. Okay, I know you're out west. And I know you're not in Florida. I don't know why Florida is coming up. But I know you're not in Florida. Uh, let's see. Are you in Arizona, sir? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm going to get it, Dave. Trust me. Uh, okay, so there's no opening here. Just going to worry about this upper lip. Just like so. And that's going to separate the upper lip from her teeth, which is good. And then we have the pupils. I mean, the uh, nostrils. So that's going to separate that. And then we're going to go darker again on her pupils. And, you know, doing something like this is really just going to set a nice framework with the line drawing and then on top these little tonal structural areas that we're able to put in with the, uh, with the customized stencils here. And these aren't, these are stencils that I make for my own line drawings and build on that so they all match up perfectly. Not Arizona. Oh man. So let me see. Can anyone so we'll make a little game at it if you don't mind, Dave. Um so uh 
Anyone out there could tell me, except for Dave, where Dave Gregory is from. Let's see. And Dave, you let us know who gets closest. And we have until 1045 to put it in. And the winner, and the winner gets a customized, uh, a customized uh, gift from me. So that's cool. So, so Dave says, I'm in an all right state. Okay. So the person gets a, gets a gift from me uh, for free. So let's see. So we'll make my horrible memory, uh, you know, my, my, mem my memory skills will we'll definitely make it worth somebody who if they can find out if they get the exact state that uh, Mr. Dave is from. Dwayne says Illinois. Dave says no in California. I already got Arizona, so I can't I can't say another one. And not in Illinois. How about this? The winner gets the stencils if they're from the UK if they win from the UK then they just have to help me with the shipping but I'll send the uh, stencils and the line drawing for this particular project I'll send that to you so you can work along that's a really good thing so it wouldn't cost me much to ship so that seems like that's a, a good gift and I'll make them up tomorrow and ship them out by Friday because I have to walk to the post office. Oh, Dwayne says Tennessee. So we got four more minutes to see if anyone's going to win that. So this is a great chance to win the stencils and the line drawing sent to you so you could work along with this. Uh, work along, along with this. I'm going to keep tonight's live stream and all the live streams up for, for a while. Oh, thanks. Honey says it's great to see how it all comes together from start to finish. Always enjoy day one of your portraits. Thank you. Day one is exciting, right? Because you can really see the beginning part. darkening that nostril. I mean the pupils. All right, so we're going to do that little uh, flip method here. See what that looks like. Color graphic says uh, Wisconsin and so and and Dave's not a tennis player. <laughs> That's funny. Oh man, I'm pretty sure that Dwayne got it. Now I remember, so my memory came back. So, Mr. Dwayne, way to go, Oklahoma. Mr. Dwayne, you get the I have your address, so that's good. And I might send you another little gift with that. So I have your address. You're going to get the line drawing. You're going to get all the stencils. And then you could just follow along. So that sounds cool. And I would love to see what you, uh, what you make, you know. So if you could uh, definitely tell me how that comes out, you know, because Dwayne's a very good artist. So that's exciting. So I'm just going to pull this up to see what it looks like thus far. So that was pretty cool. So that turned out. So my lack of memory turned out to be a fun 
a fun moment in the live stream. <laughs> oh, so Dave's originally from Nevada. Very cool. Let's take a look. All right, look how she's coming, guys. Not bad. So I have this shield here, and I'm going to keep this here because I want to do the... Uh, I want to darken the sweater, right? So it's a little dark here. So I'm just going to keep this here. So now when I make my stencils, I make them for like several functions, right? It's not just for the eyes, nose, and mouth. I make them very, very, they're very complicated and complex. So that's a good thing. And let's see, great city of lost wages. <laughs> <laughs> and Dwayne says, I will, Tim, and it will be a portrait. A portrait. He hasn't done one in 20 years. That's exciting. You're a great artist, so Dwayne, you could do anything you set your mind to. I mean, no matter what you paint, that's for sure. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come over here and darken that sweater. It's not too dark, it's just dark a little bit. But what that's going to do is that's going to give us a really nice border and kind of develop the shape of her chin, which is basically the mandible and going into the mentalis. And I think from here, we're good. Good to go. Let's see. There we go. So you see how she's coming now? Very nicely. So we have a nice mapping out, right? A nice starting point. And that's what we want. We don't want to just go straight in. We want to have everything where it's working out and uh, is going to help us to develop this. So now what I want to do is I want to start developing her eyes. I'm going to start with the eye on camera right right now. You see how I have the pupil mapped out already? Just so sweet not to have to redevelop the wheel so this is all here for me and this kind of blends in here we go we can start developing her portrait and the fact that i i use these custom shields not just to spray through but to think about where i'm going right which is so important And eventually I'm going to get rid of these pencil lines. Pencil lines are like training wheels. They're good and you need them, but you have to know just when to get rid of them. You don't want to get rid of them too early. I worked hard on those pencil lines. I don't want to just get rid of them before, before I don't need them anymore. See right here, this is the uh, retro orbicularis opali fat right there. And I'm going to leave that there. Make sure I develop that. Okay, so we'll work on the eye on camera left. Let's see if I can zoom in for us. Oh, Dave says, sorry, Tim, no super chat tonight. Ah, oh, don't worry about that, Dave. I appreciate that. Had to lock your checking due to suspicious activity. Oh, happy birthday to Mr. Dave Gregory. Dave, give me your address. I'm going to send you one of these uh, kits here with the line drawing and, and the, um, 
with the line drawing and the stencils. I'll send you one of these kits. That sound good, sir? So for your birthday, I'm going to do that for you. Thank you so much. So, so sorry about your account. I hope that gets rectified for you really fast. Dwayne, thank you so much. Happy February. Dwayne, I really appreciate the Super Chat sticker. It means a lot to me. And, uh, and it really helps the channel because at the end of the month, uh, I get a check from, from, uh, from, from YouTube and that pays for like my light bills and stuff like that. So it really is very fantastic, Dwayne. That really helps a lot. And, uh, so I'm excited and thankful. Uh, thank you, uh, Braden, and thank you, Dwayne, tonight. Really makes my, really makes my week. Thank you, sir. And so that's fantastic. And looking forward to that. And looking forward to seeing what you do, Dave. If you just email me your address, I'll make sure I get that packet out to you by Friday. Oh, we were gonna, we were gonna zoom in here. So let's go ahead and make that happen. Let's see. Okay, there we go. And we'll go ahead and work this. And I do, and I'm going to lower my air pressure a little bit. I have that detail mixture in. And we're just going to kind of define things. Now, you become like an airbrush whisperer. You kind of have a sense that something is not quite perfect. So, so basically what I'll do is I'll check for tip dry, right? And then if there's no tip dry, I'll loosen the chucking nut and I'll just make sure that there's nothing stuck in the nozzle, nozzle like dried ink or something, but everything looks good. And now I should be back in business. Let's see. Okay, now we're now we're in tip top shape. So you never know what it is, but you want to get that low hanging fruit, you know. And we'll work on the iris a little bit here. There we go. Just developing that eye a little bit. And yes, happy birthday to Mr. Dave. Thank you so much for hanging out with us on your birthday. I hope your birthday is amazing and fun. Has all your favorite people and all your favorite stuff and music and everything. You deserve it, sir. Ah, oh, honey says, don't forget to like and share. Yes, don't forget. That's great. Thank you for reminding us, honey. Yeah, if you subscribe to the channel, it helps a lot. You know, it tells me that I'm doing something good. And if people see a lot of people are, are subscribed, they're going to be like, hey, something must be going on over there. And maybe they check out the channel as well. So, so that's cool. So we're working on this eye here. And then, right, I'm, I'm going to not pay attention to the lower eyelashes right now. Right now, I'm just going to be working on the shadow and the local color of the lower eyelid. And that shape there. nice and dark right here and remember stay light right you want to stay light so important so crucial at this stage light is right and let's zoom out so you can see how we're working on her eyes we'll go and work on her darken this eyebrow here Always do your one second rule. Keep your head in the game. That's very important. And 
There we go. So getting a nice development. Maybe we can darken the pupils a little bit. Just on the outside, a little darker right here on the outside, just like that. And let's work on the other pupil here on the iris. I'm not one of the uh, one of the airbrush artists that really go in there and want every tiny little detail. I kind of try and paint like an old master in the sense, you know, what I leave out is just as important as what I paint in. So I look for opportunities to leave stuff out that might be there in the photo, but might be superfluous or just not needed. So it's important what you leave out sometimes is just as important as what you leave in. Just working on that lower eyelid there, like before. Okay. And I'm not erasing it because remember, it's uh, that whole thing of keeping my training wheels, right? So I'm going to go down the center line of her, of her face here. And remember, we darkened her nostrils. So we're just going to continue to kind of get that shape of this cast shadow. And it's darker closer to her, her nose here. And then it gets lighter as it goes further from whatever is casting the shadow. So when you have a, a, a shadow being cast by an object, it's always darkest closest to that object. And as you get further from the object, it gets much more lighter and transparent because there is uh, reflected light bouncing all over the place and it's actually going, as you get further from that, more of the light is able to get there. The, the reflected light, that is. There we go. So now we're getting a little bit better with that cast shadow. And then it gets much lighter. So you see I'm just increasing my distance to get that gradation. So distance, let distance be your friend. And then right here we have difference between a cast shadow. A cast shadow is an object that gets in the way of the light and casts its shadow on the object. So it's in the word. And form shadow. Form shadow is when uh, the form is being hit by the light and as that form turns away from the light, that's where you get shadow. So that's form shadow. So your form shadow and cast shadow are different. Just going to get rid of our pencil lines. We don't need them right now. Okay. And this is thoroughly dry, so we're good. You want to be always gentle. When you're erasing the face, always be gentle. So as if you were erasing on her face, you wouldn't want to dig into her face. You want to be gentle with her. And that's okay. So now I'm going to be very, going to lower my air pressure just a little bit more. And I'm going to be very ginger, gingerly. One second rule. Now I'm paying attention that she has what is called the ALAR cartilage. We all have it. So I'm um, seeing that ALAR cartilage that is underneath her skin. So there's these little ridges here. So knowing anatomy helps me to recognize what it is I'm painting. I'm not just painting the nose. Right now I'm painting the alar cartilage. That's part of the structure of her nose. 
a lot different than just painting her nose. And let's see, uh, Mr. Bill says, uh, looking real good. Thank you, sir. That's an honor. I appreciate that. Mr. Bill is doing this amazing landscape using Createx paints. It's out of this world. Uh, I don't get to go to Bill's land, uh, Bill's uh, live streams because I have a class that I'm teaching at that time. Otherwise, I would be there. I believe Bill's class is on Tuesdays. Tuesdays at 7, if I'm not mistaken. And it's really great. So it's on his uh, Facebook channel. So definitely check it out. Really top notch. See how I'm able to set up her teeth there? I'll zoom into her mouth and you see how the sequential masking that we did with the customized stencils kind of did a lot of the heavy lifting for me. See how her teeth are set up just perfectly? And now I can start shaping her tongue here. Uh, Bill says, thanks, Timmy. Must call it an evening. It's been great, you guys. Uh, always fantastic. And uh, and soon the course is still saying 149 on the website. Oh, Fred, have a great night. If you want the, uh, you just email me or I am me and I'll just send you an invoice for this special price tonight. Okay, Fred? You let me know. So, Fred, you have a great night, sir. And always a pleasure and fantastic job on Danny Trio. Just amazing. So 7 p.m. on Tuesday for Mr. Bill's uh, live stream. So he does amazing. Lots of different things. So you see how I can work out. Even though we're in the beginning, I'm working out the shadows and the shape of her tongue here. And it's much darker here. And you see right next to her, her bottom lip, she has a dark. And I did maintain the shape of her teeth. Now they're going to be a little more in shadow, but we're going to keep that shape there for a while. And there we go. So you can see how we were able to shape this. So you see how her mouth is coming together really nicely. So that's cool. And uh, so fantastic stuff. So you're very welcome there, uh, uh, Mr. Dave. Definitely. So right now, uh, you can see how she's coming out, and I'm pretty excited, you know. This is coming out really fast, so I'm just going to go use the bathroom. I'll be right back, and then we'll do our last couple, maybe our last 20 minutes. So that's cool. See how we could kind of bring this together. I may come back in with the white mixture. That's something I do new. I'll be right back.
Okay, I'm back. So let's see. Hey, Mr. Patrick, how are you, my friend? Good to see you all the way from Massachusetts. Very cool. So I'm glad you're here. So Honey says that she's uh, having calling it the night. I hope you have a great evening, Honey. Always a pleasure, and thanks for hanging out. I really appreciate that. Okay, so let's get rid of some pencil lines, shall we? I think this is a good moment to do that. But we're not going to get rid of too many. Because getting rid of the pencil lines is going to subsequently darken up the white mixture that's underneath, right? Let's see. I'm going to get something a little bit softer, which is the Knock by Tombow. I like the Knock. Knock makes me happy. And we'll get rid of these lines underneath the cast shadow of the nose. And I think we have a likeness already. So not bad, right guys? Not bad at all. Thank God. I always like to thank God for the live streams, giving me great people to talk with, and the lights, and the equipment, and the talent and all that to make this happen. So I don't take that lightly, so I'm thanking God for tonight. Always want to do that. Okay, some of these pencil lines I need, so I'm not going to get rid of them. Don't want to have to rediscover the wheel. I already drew this out. I don't want to have to draw it out again. All right, so remember I said I was going to come in with the white mixture again? I lied. Just kidding. Uh, we're going to come in with the white mixture again because now we have a better idea of where the white is more intense, right? Mike DeLoach, how are you? Great to see you. Yes, you're coming in on the tail end, but I'm glad to see you regardless. So, Mike, so good to see you, sir. Mike, just outside of Atlanta, Georgia. And we all know where... We all know where Mr. Dave Gregory comes from, I'll tell you that much. Oklahoma. So I'm going to reiterate that ALAR cartilage. Remember we were working on the ALAR cartilage? So the nose is actually divided into three, three parts. You have your alar cartilage down here then you have your upper lateral in the middle and then on top you have your nasalis bones navel bones it's so cool because when you really know anatomy to the point where you can have a conversation with a plastic surgeon about the nasal labial fold then your portraits it's really great it's it's like you're looking for things. You're being like an explorer on expedition. And uh, it's great. So it's a great feeling when you're doing portraits and really study your anatomy. So now I'm coming in a little bit stronger where there's more light. And I'm not using the, the shields, the customized shields. Now I'm... I'm having an idea of where everything goes. And before I, I go ahead and lighten things up, I could very strategically uh, use my eraser to get rid of pencil lines and to set up some of these fat compartments that we all have. You're not going to find these fat compartments, my friends, in anatomy books for artists. Sorry. They don't give you that stuff. Remember, plastic surgery has only been around for a hundred years. So a lot of these uh, anatomy books were written far before then. So now there's all, these, all this information on the anatomy of the face, which if you know where the information is, then you can get it and just make your artwork so much better. They give you that edge, right? 
those who not many people come to my live streams and that's on them but those who come are privy to this information because I gladly give it and share it with you guys I don't take it lightly so now you can see that you guys are learning about the fat compartment stuff that only plastic surgeons will share but they won't just share it you have to find it you have to go to them and that's what I do I find the information the library card is one of the most powerful things we own or if you don't own to get one it will teach you about everything and anything your library card So you see how we're able to shape her face even more than we did before? Because now we're understanding what is the, uh, the, the optimal use of this white mixture and we're finding that out now. Increase your distance, but shape the light, right? Because the light is shaping her, now you have to shape her form just the same way by using the, the the white mixture and let's go look at her forehead here we can see it's a lot lighter here because what's happening is the light is hitting her superorbital eminences which are right above her eye sockets and so let's make this happen right on the edge the light is hitting that's a super orbital eminence. Because when you know anatomy, you can look for things. Because you won't find it if you're not looking for it. You might get lucky and stumble upon it, but if you're not looking for it, chances are you could miss it. Now, I'm not going to go into little small areas where I already put ink. That's where the white pastel comes from at the end. Remember, it's all about strategy. And, of course, you see that the zygomatic bone goes all the way next to her eye, which is the zygoma, and it connects to the temporal bone. Really thin, comes out much further than the side of the head. So it's very interesting. Okay, so let's see if I'm missing anything. Clutch says, the only thing the library card got me as a kid was fines. Yes, but you know what? I get a lot of fines from the library, but they know who I am, uh, and it's just great, you know? I mean, my library card is always hot with fines because I don't want to give those books back until I'm finished reading them. And I like reading books over and over again. So we have 15 more minutes to play around with, with this portrait here. And where do I intensify that light? See, I'm a sculptor. We're sculptors. We're not just painters. We're also sculptors. Now we're sculpting the light, right? Using the white mixture. And Dwayne says, as a kid, I learned to draw in the public library. That's so cool. And Mike says, the lower lip now or later with the pastel? The lower lip. Good question. Let's take a look, Mike. The tongue, you know, the lights with the tongue and the lower lip, that's definitely white pastel territory. Um, definitely wouldn't, wouldn't risk that with, the, uh, with the, the white mixture. Too small of an area. And also, we have a lot of painting to do. So anything I do right now might just be getting in the way. So, you know, always thinking... Great question. We're always thinking long term. Okay. So let's. So we're going to work on the uh, mental fat, which is right on top of the mentalis, which is on the mandible. So, has anyone noticed that lately I've been doing a lot of oil painting on my Facebook channel, my Facebook page? And you might be like, what's up with that? You're an airbrush. You're working in airbrush. Why are you doing 
why in the world are you doing oil paint? Has anyone thought about that? And does anyone wonder if, you know, doing, uh, doing oil paint could get in the way of the airbrush? And let's see. Now, just as a quick side note, I was trained in oil painting for six years. And well before I even touched an airbrush, well before I even touched pastel, I was trained for six years in oil paints. Let's lighten this up right over here. A little bit of a powerful swath of light hitting right there. Right here in the center is this beautiful light hitting there. And then there's this beautiful concentration of white right there. And I assumed you just like the smell of the oil paints and the turpentine. <laughs> Hey, Michael Johnson, great to see you. How are you, sir? <coughs> Michael, did you just get here or did I miss you when you came in? If I did, my apologies, Michael. Uh, I did not notice you. It's always so much going on, but I think you just got here. Michael, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much for hanging out. I appreciate that. So that's pretty funny. And uh, so Mr. Air Todd says, how do you get an even number for Super Chat? I don't know if you can get an even number. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, you Oh, do the Super Chick. Not, not, not the Super Chat, but the Super Sticker. That will help. That you get an even number for. Oh, good to see you, Michael Johnson. So, Michael, where are you from? And I'll get it. Jeff Simon, how's it going? How you doing? Jeff says one of his favorite art artists is an oil painting painter named Donato Giancola. Good to see you, Jeff. I gotta check him out. Is he on? Is he on uh, on YouTube? Wow. Or is he one of those artists from history? I love oil painting, and when I oil paint, my airbrush art gets better because I'm thinking in a different way. And that helps me to think in a different way when I'm working in airbrush. So, and I always encourage my students to work in different mediums, not just airbrush, because it's going to open things up for you and make your airbrush art that much more, just more dynamic. And so that's something to think about. Oh, Dwayne says he's never used them, but watch Bob Ross do a bunch of them, definitely. Uh, yeah, oil painting is really great, and I just got back into it. I've been doing pastels for the last 20 years or so. And so my pastels help my airbrush, and so does my oil. And my airbrush helps them as well. Oh, Michael's from Houston, Texas, currently living in Winsboro, Texas. Oh, right. Great state of Texas. I'm so glad. Jeff's from Brooklyn. Hey, I've been using Utrecht oil paints. Is that, are they too, are they far from you, Jeff? The uh, Utrecht paint factory? So I'm so glad you're here, sir. Got Brooklyn in the house. That's always a pleasure. Now let's go ahead and do a little more powerful uh, areas of the hair, right? So let's let's make the hair because blonde hair is really really difficult to paint. So if we set up some of the white, we can really get a head start. Ooh, I got a little blowout there. You got to be careful. I got excited over the over her a blonde hair sorry so so that's good because it's, it's very very platinum blonde right here 
see how we're setting up, right? It's like playing chess. You know, you get your, you don't attack first. You get all your pieces in a row, and then that's when you go to town, right? So that's exactly what we're doing now. So we're in our last 10 minutes. Dun, dun, dun. So you see how intense we made the white here of her hair? And we have some intense areas on the other side. And let's make that happen. Let's get ready to rumble. There, so you see how I'm intensifying? This is just the first couple of hours, but I really feel that we have gotten very far already. Just mapping things out. So I'm real glad you're here, Mr. Simon. I don't remember you being here before, but I just want to welcome you. This is a great group of people, and, uh, and we're here every Wednesday night, and uh, so definitely, uh, I hope to see you again, and I mean that. See, now we're, we're getting not just her face and everything turning beautifully in her face, but we're also getting the beautiful blonde lights in her hair. Ooh, there's this one errant hair coming right over here. It's just this beautiful light. Let's see if we can do this. Let's do this. Oh, see a little bit of a blow out there. I don't know what's happening with this hairbrush. Okay. This right here, I use the Omni 4000 for the, for the white mixture. But I think I just have to be very ginger with this. So now you see I went ahead and got that beautiful shaft of hair. The light shaft. And Jeff says, what are you using for the white uh, ink? No, I'm using Drew Blair 5050 Illustration White. And I cut that down with 50% distilled water and the paint. And Createx really hit a home run with that. So uh, it's great because it's the only paint where you can erase the pencil lines afterwards. So three cheers for, for uh, Drew Blair and another three cheers for... Uh, those folks out in Createx to make that. I'm very thankful for them for that. That was good. So thank you, Createx guys. I know you'll never hear this, but just thank you for that formulation. You'll never hear this. And Dwayne says, Createx, oh, thank you for that, Dwayne. I appreciate that, sir. And, uh, Oh, Dwayne says he pretty much started airbrush when he was 13 and never wanted to do any other mediums. He's an airbrush junkie. <laughs> well, you're a born artist there, Dwayne. If you tried any other mediums if you wanted to, you, you would knock it out of the park. Uh, definitely. But, you know, if and when you're ready, you'll, you'll just feel it. You know, you'll just feel that you want to do that other medium. And if not, that's cool too. No right or wrong answer when it comes to that stuff. Okay, so I'm really loving it. Now let's see if we could. So we went a little bold with her hair there. And let's see if we can work on some of the dark areas of her hair. So I'm gonna go back to my Extreme Patriot Arrow. And I'm using a detail mixture, 50-50 uh, with water. Uh, so you know, five drops of the detail mixture, five drops of water, that's the ratio. And now we're just going to work on some of the darks of the hair. Oh, Dwayne, draw see, you do, drawing definitely with fountain pens. I'd love to see some of that when you get a chance. 
And Jeff says he likes also likes to reduce the illustration colors with distilled water. Seems to work better than the 4011 reducer. I heard that a lot. And, and you know, whatever you can do to not have any kind of weird scents in the, you know, smells in the studio. So whenever I could use something like distilled water, I agree, it's always best. And I do like the way that it works with water when you reduce it. I feel that, you know, when you use like reducer like that, it kind of breaks down the paint and I don't like that. I just want to spread it out. So I agree that distilled water really works great. Uh, why not illustration colors for the entire painting? Great question. Um, so here's the question. I mean, here's the thing. Why, and it's a great question. So several reasons. With the India ink, it flows much better because it's not acrylic and it flows much better and you can dilute and spread ink forever. Number two, you get not black, but you get this beautiful greenish black gray color. But what's wonderful, whenever you have pencil lines and you spray the India ink and you can go as dark as light or light, the India ink does not trap in the pencil lines. It comes off so easily. And that's the big, the biggest thing, because the, like, Createx will lock everything in. So I even do uh, India ink for my underpaintings for pastel, for oils, for uh, uh, acrylic painting with Createx or Golden. I use that, and it never gets locked in. So that's always really... A wonderful underpainting so definitely I would say this stuff plus the way it goes through the airbrush remember guys that airbrush was originally invented for dyes and inks acrylics came much much afterwards and they're getting better to paint companies with having the uh, acrylic spray through with their formulations they're doing great Createx included Createx is the leader in, I feel, when it comes to acrylic through the airbrush. I think they're amazing. But, still, inks work better through the airbrush. And once you spray this stuff, you're really going to be like, the control you have with this detail mixture, there's just no rival to it, Jeff. Uh, Give it a shot. I sell it on my website, and it's on sale now, the full set for $19.99. If you want to spray through that, the link's in the description. And right now, they're like 20% off. So give them a shot. I'll send it out to you within the, within the next couple of days. You should have it by Monday. And the way that it flows through and the control you get with your airbrush is second to none. It really is. Um... Let's see, Todd says, mine just goes in even increments, that Dwayne said. Oh, we're talking about the super chat. Thank you guys for that. Uh, Jeff says, uh, oh, Drew says, uh, no, Dave says, Drew, like Tim, is a great artisan. Thank you, David, I appreciate that. You're a great person yourself. So that's an honor. Thank you for saying that, Dave. Dwayne says, Jeff, Createx recommends dinning with water, not reducer. Drew Blair says water or Windex, and Mr. Dwayne just uses uh, distilled water. Great information, Dwayne. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, Dave says, I will have to expand my Arsenal India ink. You will love it, Dave, definitely. Uh, so, no, yeah, let me know when you're ready. I'll send you some extras. You too, Jeff. When you're ready to order, I'll send some extras. If I get an order from you guys, we're just going to add some extra uh, airbrush into your inks in there. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll throw in the uh, detail mi the uh, white mixture. That would be cool. I always take care of you guys. Look at that. It is 1130, so that means I turn into a pumpkin or something. 
Uh, nope, that means that's the end of the live stream. Thank you so much, everybody, to hang out. Uh, thanks for trying with the uh, Super Chat sticker next time, sir. So I appreciate that, Mr. Todd. Dwayne says he's used to tip dry and still picks the needle every couple of seconds, even with Tim's inks. That doesn't need it. Right, it's a, it's a force of habit, right? And so, guys, thank you for blessing me, and thank you for the Super Chats and everything like that. And we know that Mr. Mr. Uh, Dave is from Oklahoma. I'm going to send out the uh, packet to Dave. Dave, I need your address. So, so definitely get your address to me. I have your address, Mr. Dwayne. And I will talk to you guys soon. And